Hi, I'm Steve Miller. Call me Slim. And this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week. And a look forward at what might happen in coming weeks. And hopefully, lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout this show. Well, the stock market surged this week, reversing big selling from the week before, as there was a growth stock revival. And consistent buying came in the tech stocks, pushing up the NASDAQ, and that led the indexes to new highs. Monday saw big overnight selling, and that was reversed. Uh, Japan was down 4%, and China came out cracking down on Bitcoin mining. And there was a panic, actually, that didn't last too long. Ten-year yields fell all the way down to 1.36, and it seemed like there was going to be a big follow-through from the selling we saw on Friday in the previous week. But the PPT of the Bank of Japan stepped in and bought $70 billion in ETFs, and then the market reversed. So it's a tag team from these central banks. And the S&P 500, which was threatening to be a lot lower, finished actually up 64 points on the day. And the Dow gained a massive 631 points on Monday. Tuesday, China ended Bitcoin mining, and they banned their banks from doing transactions. Bitcoin fell to 28,600, a bullseye on our downside target. That was down 56% from its high, and if you followed our analysis, we were looking for as much as 60% on the downside during this period. Then it had a decent reversal that day, and we do believe that was a temporary bottom for Bitcoin. Temporary, I say. <clears throat> Powell came out, and he, he had a testimony um, before Congress on the COVID-19 response. And he said, it will take more than inflation fear to raise rates. The S&P 500, well, moved up on that as investors took heart. And uh, that uh, ended up about 22 points on the day, even though there was a weak close. Wednesday, a huge amount of economic data came out. Uh, factory orders, they were up at a record. New existing home prices, well, they year over year, it's new and existing home prices, up 18.1% and 23.6% year over year, uh, respectfully. That is just absolutely enormous. Fed Kaplan came out and he said, the economic threshold has been met for tapering. And that is likely to come sooner rather than later. Well, the stock market, which doesn't want to hear anything negative or doesn't care, just really had a sideways day. <clears throat> On Thursday, Bullard came out, and this was a week of a ton of Fed talk, and said more inflation is coming as the economy heats up. Well, that does go against Powell's talk of transitory, but maybe it just means transitory means longer. Of course, Transitory inflation does not mean that inflation is going to come down. In other words, there's, they're not talking about deflation. They're just simply talking about the rate, which has come up significantly, pulling back. And that means that everybody who is paying higher prices, especially those people who it's hardest on, will continue to do so. Anyway, SEPA, uh, the S&P 500 moved up 25 points on the day. And that happened as buying came in late in the day as President Biden came out and said they reached a bipartisan deal on infrastructure. That's a $953 billion plan. Uh, and uh, sadly, um, for uh, the people that are celebrating this, um, the progressives and the conservatives are not going to be happy about this. So I believe there's still a long way <clears throat> from getting something like that passed. Friday, uh, it was a huge earnings day from Nike, and that lifted stocks uh, again to new highs. 
Nike is one of the stocks which in which we were negative. And uh, I have more to say on that and uh, the other stocks that we talked about in a way that was negative just a couple of weeks ago, because I'm going to give you a special review of those coming up. Also helping the market today on Friday, the bank stress test came out, and they came out really as all healthy, and the uh, government said that they can now buy back their stocks and they can raise their dividends again. That gave a lift a little bit to the financials uh, as they're picking their heads up on what is good news, but it's really news the market knew was coming. Uh, and uh, we have discussed a weakening condition in the financial sector, and I think that is going to end up to be meaningful. So only minor upticks only, and uh, there's a great review on those bank stocks that was done by uh, our analyst, Arvi, uh, that you can see the full review, and I'm going to give you a little preview of that, a full review if you are a level two or higher member at AskSlim.com. So far, though, on Friday, it's a mixed day uh, as we do this um, recording around midday. Uh, still, the market is quite strong, but there is no range, and I'm getting emails from uh, people that are trading uh, and discussions talking about the challenge uh, it is for interday trading right now because the ranges have been incredibly small. <clears throat> so the stock market has extended this rally, which looks like it still has some to go and maybe into July. Our expectations were for a peak in June or in early July if it really wanted to extend and get to the higher prices, which it, it does look like it's it, it's doing. Our analysis for a significant correction starting in July and going through August uh, still has not changed. Despite the strength that we see here, it just simply does lift up the downward targets about a little bit. And you'll see where those targets are as I give the one to three month view a little later in the show. RV shared a chart with me that I think is very significant uh, on the bigger picture of the stock market, and I want to share that with you. Here is a chart of some rare signals, and the source for this was CSRP and Bloomberg and uh, Sentiment Trader. Sentiment Trader is a, a great site that has some really good information on it. <clears throat> And this is really a very interesting chart. This goes back to 1928 to present day. And what this chart is showing you are signals. And what those signals are are when the S&P 500 closes at a record high. And at the same time, there are less than 50% of the members of the S&P 500 that are above their 50-day moving average. What that essentially says is that the market breadth is weak and that the market new highs are being carried by fewer and fewer stocks. That's what we have going on right now. And you can see in here these signals uh, as uh, you look all the way back here, and there was a beautiful one right there at the top in 1929. This one right over here in 1960-ish is when you had a fairly minor correction. This one right over here actually did not bring a correction. There were two right over here that brought you the peak in 73 and the big bear market into 75, which was really good. There was an early one right over here uh, in uh, 1998, and of course the uh, 2000 peak right over there, and the really bad bear market at that point, and we're getting the same kind of a signal right now. As the market gets carried up by fewer and fewer stocks, and what that says is that the underpinnings of the market are weakening. Of course, this is a long-term chart. There's no guarantee that the market is going to turn down. These signals overall have been very good. But it really states the case, I think, that is important, that the market breadth is weakening, uh, that uh, it's come up to a level where the air has gotten very thin, and uh, the acceleration to the upside is going to be much harder to come by uh, unless somehow there's another fueling of uh, the uh, funny money that comes out and uh, from the government and can lift stocks further. But this is uh, good news uh, for the bears uh, who have been struggling. Uh, but of course, this could take months to resolve. And often tops do take months to resolve. Uh, so uh, n this is not saying the market goes straight down right now, but it is a signal of some historical trouble. 
uh, that uh, the market could begin to suffer sometime soon. So our intermediate picture has been uh, for the market uh, to make a top and then pull back. But truth is, is that that's only through August. And then we think that the market will try again on the upside, uh, but not be able to make significant upside ground. So uh, we think a big top is forming, but that could, as I say, take money, many months for that top to form. And we're looking for this intermediate pullback to begin, well, momentarily. <clears throat> so uh, that is a look at, I think, this uh, at this important uh, bigger picture, uh, with which, you know, following our big picture analysis could take the market down into 22 or uh, 2023 in some significant way. And there's going to be a lot of people that send me comments that they don't agree with that. But this is some very, very interesting uh, stuff that we're looking at. Uh, for the week uh, so far, um, the stock market uh, has uh, made very large gains uh, as uh, it's up about uh, two and a half to three percent in the major indexes. Uh, the Russell, though, gaining four and a half percent as some of the low caps have really caught fire here, especially when interest rates do pull back. That's what happens. Um, the, the bond market, uh, actually, the long end fell about two and a half points. Uh, and the 10-year yields have moved up by eight basis points, still in a net downtrend, uh, down to, uh, we're up this week, up to about 1.53%. Our target on the downside during what we believe is going to be a corrective period for stocks in the next one to two months um, is to about 1.38% on the 10-year, so we think that the bond market is going to rally again. Gold... A very feeble bounce for gold and silver, um, only up $13 for gold and $0.28 cents for silver. These are very poor, poor bounces. Uh, for silver, we actually think that $25 may be coming uh, before the silver can get traction again uh, to move to the upside. The dollar down about six tenths of a percent uh, on the week. Uh, I think it has about another week or so to decline, but then it's uh, uh, likely to move up towards our next target, which would be about 92.60 on the dollar. Oil market still super strong, up nearly three dollars on the week, and we still think there is upside coming uh, in the um, oil market. Uh, coming up in this show, uh, we're going to have a, a preview of a member video uh, where we're going to look at the financial stocks. Arvi does a great job on that. Uh, I'm going to review my analysis I shared of a couple of weeks ago that really went wrong. And we're going to look at the stock market one to three month view at the end of the show. Again, one more quick look at this chart, which says um, for the long term, Breath is weakening, and the stock market will be peaking. Please do go to AskLim.com, explore our site, uh, and uh, you can become a free member if you want to just get a peek at the things that we're doing. Uh, and I'm going to tell you in just a few minutes about a great specials that we have going on right now. So uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do subscribe to the channel. Click that notification bell, and you will know when we put up one of our many videos that we put up uh, on a regular basis. Make sure you like this video. Give us a thumbs up. That always does help us. And if you are using Twitter, follow us at AskSlim.com. Uh, if you have any questions about our membership, uh, uh, information on the uh, great educational and analytical offerings that we have, do write to Matt at AskSlim.com. This is a preview coming up of a member video. Uh, RV, our lead cycle analyst, uh, does these great videos, uh, and we share with you a couple of the uh, charts that we look at. In this case, he did a video on the financial stocks, uh, the bank stocks, and uh, we have we highlighted the bank stocks uh, last week. We'll talk a little bit more about them this week. But overall, uh, despite the fact that they're moving up today uh, as there was uh, this relief from the stress tests and that they now can buy, buy their stock again and increase their dividends, um, there are some worrisome patterns in this group. And I think that uh, Arby does a great job of showing that to you. So here's an example of two of those uh, as you look at 
uh, Citigroup and TFC. I hope you enjoy this. So this is Citigroup, and this one also has already suffered a breakdown. And you can see this is uh, really lagging uh, also relative to uh, some of the major banks that we have highlighted here. We have broken below this key intermediate term cycle low here at 68.41, and we would be looking for this zone on the upside to hold it from uh, around 72 up to around 75. That's the zone where we would look for this to hold and then to move back down if it were to get back over the 78.6 uh, at 77.47 that would be a much more positive situation and would really take this really uh, bearish forecast out of play the next key low is due 10.11 to 12.6 so, that, so that's really the picture in Citigroup we have a breakdown and watching for a bear flag to form followed by a rotation back to the downside. This is TFC. What we see here is a breakdown that has formed here in Truist, and you can see we are already well below this key low here at 55.16. We have negative weekly momentum here as well, watching for a bear flag to form off of this minor cycle low, and then for this to rotate back on the downside. So that's the overall picture here in Truist. On the upside, we have a key zone on the upside from 56.47 up to 58.89. And if Truist were to get back over the 78.6 at 60.53, that would really repair this pattern on, on the downside, and we would, we would have to update this cycle analysis. So I do want to let you know of that. The next key low is due 10.18 to 12.6. All right, I'm going to review six stocks that were rated strong sell. I did this in a video uh, back two weeks ago in Market Week, and I thought those stocks would be leading the market to the downside. Well, they did not fall. Um, I've gotten tons of comments on this, uh, uh, whether it's comments on social media or criticisms or angry members. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this video segment, if you want to go back and look at, the original was from uh, June 11th. Of course, you know, we always encourage members to use appropriate size for their trading so that things do go wrong. Um, that uh, the the losses are uh, containable, acceptable. Um, so the the video that we did was six market uh, leaders that um, had intermediate negative conditions for swing trading, and that we rated them strong sell. It's kind of unusual. Uh, I don't um, normally come out with something that aggressive in market week. Uh, but these really were what I considered to be high probability. I, I made the point that these stocks were likely to influence the stock market to the downside, which we thought was uh, going to begin very shortly, uh, the correction. Uh, and that was incorrect. Uh, I certainly don't want to only show things that go well and bring that back to you because then I'll have no credibility. I want to really, when things don't go right, I want to own it. And we, we always say that we expect that we're going to be incorrect about one third of the time or so, and that we're, you know, to about two to one correct. And I think that holds up uh, very well. In this case, uh, not only did these stocks not influence the market to the downside, but renewed strength in the NASDAQ pulled them up, so, plus some other individual news in these stocks. So uh, despite what I thought were the probabilities of them moving down, they went up to a higher high. Sometimes lower probability does happen. I want to review these six stocks, Square, Nike, Netflix, First Solar, Twitter, and Tesla, because uh, things did change, and we're getting a lot of questions on them, and I can't give advice to people that write to me, uh, and I really don't want to respond to people that, you know, put put up comments that aren't pleasant. So I, what I want to do is just look at the charts and see what changed, put the re revisions in there, and just as I showed originally, let you do what you think is right based on these six stocks and revised analysis that we're going to look at.
So let's take a look at the first one in here, and that is square. So what I want to do is kind of, you know, just talk about where we were a couple of weeks ago and uh, talk about these patterns and then see if anything changed and what has happened. So the first thing to look at here is that, you know, as we saw the stock strengthen this week, we raised up our cycle low projections in here. For those of you that are new, cycle analysis measures the, the heartbeat of the market, essentially, the rhythmic motion. And it's measured from low to low. So this is a cycle period that we call it when it's measured from low to low. And the uh, uh, these are the ideal, as if it, it was trading right on the average, which it mostly doesn't do. It varies uh, either side of the ideal. And these vertical lines actually show you where the ideal lows were, and you can see the rhythmic action in there is really pretty. Look at this cycle, positive, you can see the green arrow, positive, positive. That's your uptrend. And you can see the momentum conditions in here, positive to flat, basically, through these little corrections. And then it began to turn negative and give up a lot of ground right there. You had this double top. And what we looked for was that since this low over here was 10 weeks, and since the average length of a cycle right in here, I'll just uh, highlight that for you to see, the average length is uh, 18 weeks, the probability was high that this would fall for like 6 to 10 weeks more on the downside. And we were right over here and momentum was negative. But now the stock has begun to move up and momentum has turned up again. What that says to us is that, well, the likelihood of a decline is still here and from the resistance area. In other words, this whole cycle still exists and we're still in this downward corrective phase, it does raise up the projection in here to kind of give you a double bottom here around 190. That's still 40 something points on the downside, and it is possible that the decline will come and you won't get quite that low. But still, this, the pattern is, is what it has, is what it was back then, just overall. The uh, uh, objectives on the downside have improved slightly. The fact that it challenged this in the 10th week makes it a very high probability that this rally will fail. That's where we were back then, and that's where we are now, only looking for higher levels. Originally, we were looking for way down over here, but now that does not seem feasible based on this improved pattern that we have there in square. So we still look for about a month or six weeks to the downside, but overall it's not anywhere near as bad as it looked. So we'll call this pretty much improved when we look at that. The next one we're going to look at is Nike, NKE. This stock had massive earnings in here, and uh, what I want to show you is uh, how this analysis has changed. So what I left in here was our original analysis. And that is that because this cycle had broken down right over here, it was likely that it would continue down uh, to about a price of about 120 over the next month. The earnings were blowout on the upside right over here, and you can see what the stock did. So our revision right is right over here where I look at this, and now you can see what really happened. What happened was, was that the cycle length had shortened a little bit. And when that happens, uh, it's, uh, there's a possibility that it will do better. And so what we did is we took the average cycle and made it a little bit shorter. The actual low came right over here. And this is what made us wrong. The, the, the cycle bottomed faster. And it then there's big earnings blew it out on the upside. And that changes everything. This uh, resistance right up over here near 160 is, you see, where we project it up to right now. It could stall at this 161.8 at about 154, uh, where it's basically gotten up to today. But this is, of course, a much improved pattern. And we were wrong here because the, uh, the, the news was so good, the lengthened the cycle, uh, which, was, uh, which we had longer in here and pointing down, shortened, and it began to go up. And we were wrong in this, and uh, you could see the reason why, uh, because the earnings were just uh, fantastic and investors loved it, and now that changes the pattern. So instead of being in the final weeks where you have the risk and the downside, you're now in only the second week off of that low, 
and it has time to move to the upside. And you'll see momentum, which was kind of waffling in here, is now turned up again. So this is in much better shape, certainly. And that's, uh, <laughs> if there's ever been hindsight in saying something, well, that's it. So that is a look at Nike. Let's take a look at Netflix, NFLX. Now, Netflix <clears throat> is a stock that we were negative on, and that really has not changed right now. Now, certainly this week right over here looks very strong. You could see it's gotten up into the resistance area right over there. But this cycle does point to the downside. And you can see in here where there was a cycle that broke below that key low right over here. It actually went up and challenged the high and surpassed it and then failed and then came down again. So what's right in here is similar to what we believe is going on right here. Even if it made a little higher prices, the next month does show some weakness. So the Netflix has, has not changed by a whole lot other than we again raise the low projection. We do that because of this action right over here, slight upturn right there in momentum, and now looking for it to get down here to about 480 or so, which is greatly uh, um, uh, upgraded from what we originally looked for in Netflix. So that stock upgraded, and uh, again, so far on that one we'll say has not worked. Uh, and probably for people that looked at it two weeks ago, there is, uh, if you're holding on and you acted on that, there's probably a best case of only getting even on that. First Solar, FSLR, is the next one in there that we uh, talked about. And uh, this stock moving up also very sharply in here. And you can see it's moving up uh, towards testing those highs. What this does also is change the, uh, the low projection, but the cyclical pattern does not change in this case, and it has maybe another six, seven weeks to go, and we would expect some pullback down over here uh, to somewhere down around this area again. So uh, if it gets above that high over there at 91, that will raise the projections again. Uh, this one clearly did not work, and right over here, after having broken down, the probabilities were high that it would continue down right over here, and uh, we were projecting down in this area, but now we raised those cycle low projections based on this action, and that was wrong. The next thing we'll look at, or the last thing we'll look at, uh, and there, no, we have two more, is uh, first one is Twitter, TWTR, and this one explodes to the upside. This one is going to take a little more explanation because I want you to look at the minor cycle right in here, the small one. And uh, the bottom right there, and the bottom right there, and the bottom right there. <clears throat> what happened was, was that the bigger cycle lengthened by a minor cycle distance, as you can see right in here. And what when that happens, the big dominant cycle shifts to the right. So right over here was an important low. We This grayed out pattern that you can see right there in that projection is what we were originally looking at, which would have taken you down in through this time frame. What happened was, was that there was a, um, uh, a launch on 624 of new, mon of new features that allowed monetization. Ticketed spaces where you could charge uh, for people to come in and hear you talk or hear a group of people talk or super followers uh, that could benefit from monetization. And uh, that lifted the stock, as you see right over here. And that made the shift over here very clear. It went into positive momentum, as you can see. And that changes it, because now we measure that cycle right in here, and this being the new cycle projection right there. And now it's gotten up into the resistance area. So it could stall right over here, or it could stall right up over here near 73 which still some time to go, but uh, the, the whole concept of this cycle, which should have been pushing down to this point, did not work. That was wrong, and this shift in here on this news uh, is significant, and that's what happened, and that's where it is right now. And the last one we're going to look at is Tesla, T-S-L-A. And just as what's happening here is uh, as the, the rest of the group, which has benefited from the uh, upticks in the NASDAQ, and uh, I want to just look at these cycles right on here, sorry, where you can see this the uh, cyclical action 
and the beautiful patterns that you see right over here. Nice triangle that's shaped there, and then the breakout, the low spot on right here, and then a triangle right over here, which uh, two out of three times would have resolved to the downside, but then resolved to the upside. So the question is, you know, are we, is this right over here like this right over here? Well, what I want you to see is that this exists in a positive cyclical uh, formation right there, and early in this rising phase. This exists in a negative formation in here, and late in the phase. That says the probabilities are much greater that this will fail. Again, we raise our projection based on this pattern, and it says the next something like five to seven weeks should be on the downside, somewhere into mid-August uh, to late August or early September, and that this should fail in the resistance level right there and be moving down again. So while this was wrong on the short term, the pattern is still what it was, and that really hasn't changed much other than raising the upside projections. So that is a look at the six stocks, uh, reviewing those stocks, which we had rated strong sell, that did not fall. Many of you uh, that have written in wanted that information and to see the revisions, and that's what we want to do. We always want to bring you the uh, important information as it changes, especially on something I present the way I presented this. Um, yes, we were wrong, but I always want to be accountable and I always want to be credible. And uh, I hope uh, that uh, you see that, of course, we'll be wrong at some times. Uh, and we do want to take ownership as far as that goes. And we always encourage ownership uh, of the trades uh, for our, our members uh, because then you're not waiting for us to share with you changes. It's all about how you handle the trade, that it's uh, a size appropriate, and that you do the risk management based on who you are as a trader or an investor, uh, your own style or market engagement to risk tolerance and uh, many other things that are involved in that. So uh, I do hope that those of you that you know acted on these trades um, understand that we're going to be wrong sometimes, and what we want to make sure is that we bring you the best education and analytical process that we can. That is a review of the six stocks rated strong sell that did not fall. This is the Eslim Previous uh, Services a Preview uh, that we have run um, that ends today. Um, with the completion of our special preview period, there will be some changes coming soon and exciting new opportunities. As you have seen, our goal is to bring professional-grade education and analysis to traders and investors all over the world. Uh, and I've done that, you know, basically built on my 47 years as a professional trader. Yes, I started on the CBOE in 1974. Since then, uh, I've developed as an analyst and a, a trading coach. Um, we, we believe in continuous innovation uh, and want to deliver the highest quality trade planning tools and analysis that we can bring to you. Uh, in order to support our continued development and expanding services, our membership rates will be increasing on July 20th. The good news is you can beat the price increase by taking advantage of our special quarterly trial offers and get grandfathered in so you can lock in the current rates that we have. Also, the rates for our current members will not be increasing. That means if you're already a member, you're grandfathered in, and your current rates will hold as long as you remain a premium member. So don't miss this and beat these price increases. Uh, you can get more information. Uh, you can uh, become a free member and receive those special trial offers or write to Matt at AskSlim.com. Uh, and I want you to go to AskSlim.com and uh, there's a little uh, offer up on the top uh, for our level two and you'll be able to see uh, what that is right now. Our special level two trial. Uh, is just so jam-packed with information, you're going to love it, especially if you're an active trader or trade the indexes. This is fantastic. Our Stock Index Report Daily Snapshot 
comes to you with a very deep short-term analysis on the indexes. It's, it's really broad. There's too much for me to share with you right now, but it's fantastic information. Our stock index report daily intraday live chart stream is amazing. We we're bringing the S and P 500, Nasdaq, and the Russell on uh, intraday charts. It includes the acceleration zones. It includes the uh, support resistances. I'm going to show you what that looks like in a moment. Um, the weekly uh, future speak show, which I do, it has 24 different futures contracts, which I do deep analysis weekly and daily, uh, and uh, also cover the indexes and Bitcoin and and uh, just uh, so much in there. You. It's literally our favorite show of our members uh, who uh, watch it. And that we send out uh, what we call Future Speak Minutes, and you'll be able to actually go to the exact location uh, and watch only those things that you're interested in. You get our complete library of over 500 videos in nine categories, and we put in three new videos at least in there weekly. Uh, the Slimulator Momentum Tracker, this is for longer term traders, position traders, investors, um, over a thousand symbols. There's multiple time frames with our proprietary algorithms in there. And it gives you directional bias uh, as uh, a sum of that evidence. Fantastic. Uh, you, it, there's, you got to look at it to believe the quality in there with some, with a great chart in there for you to see when the signals come. You get our weekly uh, Spider Select ETF report. Uh, where we look at the technical sides of uh, S and P 500 sectors, S and P sectors, and uh, trade planning worksheets where you can organize, organize and prioritize, and save and track your technical analysis right on our workbench. Um, th this is just such unbelievably deep information, and the special we have is mind blowing in here. Take a look at the SIR Interday Law. Uh, a live chart stream grid right here. This is from yesterday, uh, 624. And you can see in here what we give uh, is the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Russell. These are live. You see them live. You don't need any special um, uh, platform. Uh, you just open it up uh, with the link that we send to you. And what you get uh, is our reversal scout, which essentially gives you a directional uh, idea and uh, tells you, you know, what comparatively is the strongest or weakest. You will uh, you get support and resistance levels, as you see put in right here. And the yellow zones are called acceleration zones. The probability is better than 80%. When it gets in there, it's going to move up through it. In this case, the NASDAQ moved up through two acceleration zones and hit that FIB extension zone and then turned over right in here. And you saw the weakness come in in the NASDAQ. But look what happened in here in the Russells. It moved up through the acceleration zones and did not give any ground. That showed you right over here that if you were a pair trader, you would want to short the Nasdaq and buy the Russell or if you wanted to short you wouldn't short the Russell when you see this you would only short the Nasdaq uh, and just the uh, fantastic information in here and you get this live every single day uh, again you don't need any special platform and uh, one more thing I want you to look at in here and this is our video library so this is just a peek at some of it and uh, we have running in here uh, all of the new stuff what's new what's trending now this is tools for text where there are over 80 videos on here uh, in here about uh, charting and technical analysis and cycle analysis and there are several evergreen categories in here trader psychology uh, uh, stuff that you uh, will love and continue to learn from. That uh, All of that that I just showed to you, available to you in this last call, because uh, this is the last time we're going to have these prices, beat that increase, 35% off our three-month rate. That's $86.06 for three months for everything I just showed you. That's only $28.67 a month versus our regular $45 a month, and that is going up. So uh, get grandfathered in uh, and lock in these prices. Go to AskLim.com. Click on the link at the top uh, of the page uh, for that special level two offer. If you want more info on our special on all levels, um, uh, this is the last call for those pricing. Before those price increases, write to Matt at AskSlim.com. That's it for these prices, uh, and please do take advantage of them. 
Okay, stock market. Let's take a look at what's going on in here. Um, I want to mention the XLF comparison that we did last year and the fact that uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and only looking at a clip, um, go back to the uh, show and you'll see uh, some discussion on a couple of the bank stocks that uh, RV did. We did a uh, special video on stock sectors, on that stock sector, on the, on the bank's financials, uh, which uh, are, uh, I think, important to the discussion. Um, last week, uh, we uh, essentially said that the um, XLF uh, was was weak and was giving some indications uh, right now, the XLF is having an update and uh, based on the stress test and the momentum in the financials is still negative, both on the weekly and on the daily. So I wanted to speak to that because a lot of people might be asking about that. So uh, mild updates for the financials. Uh, but I think overall, the analysis we showed you last week on that and what RV is bringing this week uh, and the full video is available to level two, three and four members. Uh, to see that on the bank, so don't miss that. So what, right now what I want to do is bring the weekly chart on the SPX and the NASDAQ NDX and just uh, review that. Had lots of people that say, you don't put up the and the NASDAQ uh, and are asking for QQQ. We, we don't actually do the analysis on QQQ. We do the analysis on the cash index. So uh, it'll be on NDX and S&P 500. Let's jump over, uh, we'll take this Tesla chart down right over there and go to SPX. So our analysis in here has uh, clearly shown for a long period of time that the market was likely to move up into June. And potentially, uh, if it was going to make the upside targets, it would be into July. What I want you to see are the uh, cycle patterns that are right in here. There's a very dominant cycle right there that is suggestive of a bigger correction coming. And that's this big yellow oval that you see there when the downside risks do pick up. Um, these were kind of minor corrections that you see right in there uh, where you had the uh, minor and the intermediate cycles in a corrective period. These lasted about a month each, as you see there. And when all of these cycles are in alignment on the downside, well, that just uh, uh, basically coincided uh, the last time with the uh, big uh, COVID crack right over here. And you can see there was actually four cycles in alignment right here. Uh, the minor, the intermediate, the dominant, and the super cycle right there. Uh, that was coming down, and that brought this really big decline, uh, a nice alignment in that. So where are we right now? Uh, and if you want to learn more about cycle analysis, go to our information page uh, at AskSlim.com, and uh, I do a, a video on there. You don't have to pay anything. You just watch it. You'll see the list of uh, the things that are in our cycle uh, analysis workshop and uh, what you could learn by taking that workshop. So our analysis, I just want to look right in here and, and uh, zoom in right there. Our analysis has been that the there was a minor cycle in here that would dip. And we looked for two and a half to three and a half percent decline only in here because this was such strong upward momentum. And uh, this actually bottomed down about 4.2 percent, but it bottomed early for us. That fool, fooled us a little bit. And one of the things about markets that uh, are really strong is that cyclical patterns tend to bottom earlier. And uh, then it had this rally. So that's this some minor cycle ticking up right here. And our objective was for it to get up to this level right over here, uh, around 42.38. And then we said the outside was that it, if it wanted to be stronger into late June or early July, and that's these late, this later line up here, it would take it up to 4,300 to 43 and a quarter. Um, so that was, we were looking at 430 on the SPY uh, when I show that, and we certainly are moving up towards that 4280, the peak this week, actually today. Now, momentum in here has turned negative. As you see, it's really flattened out over these number of weeks. And earlier in the show, if you didn't see that, please go back to the beginning of the show. I talked about breath figures really not strong at all. Uh, where there are a greater uh, number than 50% of the S&P 500 
uh, that is below their 50-day moving averages. So you have a lot of negativity going on at all-time highs, and that's probably what's going to get this to fail here in this 4,300, 43 and a quarter area if it can make it up there. Now, you can see we're getting up to about halfway into here. The last declines have been four weeks, five weeks long. So this could still hold up in here a, a little bit longer. And that wouldn't be a big surprise. But then we're going to get into a riskier period in here where there are some corrections that are pretty significant. This 11% from the peak, we've had this here for quite a while. And uh, that would take you down approximately to the major 23%. For correction-wise, that's actually a bullish call, a positive call, because I'm not looking for a debacle in the market. I'm looking for some normal corrective periods, like you could see uh, happened uh, way back over here. You know, these were, you know, 10% declines or more uh, when you look back over there, uh, which is pretty normal. So I'm not looking for a massive wipeout here in the market right now. Though that, I believe, is coming down the road uh, with our big picture analysis pointing out to 22 and 23 for some rough markets. But right now, I mean, if we really wanted to project out, you know, three months, we'd be looking for a top in here. We'd be looking for a decline and then getting into another favorable period out over there. So this is just a typical modest corrective period we're looking for. Uh, and for those people that, you know, are, you know, traders, uh, 4,300 down to 3,800, uh, 500 point decline on the S&P 500, that makes 11%. That will be a huge decline. And there will be a lot of stocks that they get hurt in there uh, were that to happen. So we're, we bring probabilistic analysis, as you can see, and the probabilities are high that sometime in the next you know, couple of weeks, few weeks, this peak will be made and we're going to get into that corrective period. So 4,300, 43 and a quarter is a reasonable area. This area of that next resistance, 4,770, 4,500, it's to me extremely low probability uh, that there is a probability that could happen, but low. Uh, and if the market wanted to explode and hook everybody in, that could happen. I have a hard time seeing that happening with breath figures weakening. Uh, so we'll just uh, stick with our targets of around 4,300, 43 and a quarter and getting into this corrective period. Here is the NASDAQ. It's got a very similar look to it. It, uh, uh, just as we talked about, uh, in the six stocks earlier in the show that our analysis was wrong. Um, this, uh, why is this, uh, still gray? I don't know why that's gray. There we go. Okay. Weird. So here is uh, the uh, analysis in the NASDAQ. And you can see down this dashed line is the S&P 500 in the cycle patterns. This is the NASDAQ. And you can see it aligns pretty perfectly. Here's your corrective period, about three or four weeks. Here was four weeks right over here. And over here, we would expect it to be a little bit longer, at least four weeks. And right over there is that area of uh, about 45, 500 that we talked about in future speak this week. And uh, this is about 40, 14,000. This is 14,500. This is 14,900 approximately. We think 14,500 is reasonable here. And then we get into this corrective period. Now, the NASDAQ tends to have greater volatility, uh, higher beta. So that's why this uh, decline in here, which points to this major 23% down over here, or that cycle low, is at about 13% on the downside. Again, that's a very small correction uh, in these cyclical patterns that you see right over here. And uh, all of these cycle rhythms really worked really well. And I expect this one also to bring a correction. You can see the supports right in here. 38, 50, 61.8. If the market was super bullish and didn't want to give up that 13%, somewhere in here is where it's going to stop. But uh, even if it got down to the 50% right over there, that would still be a 1,200 point decline in the NASDAQ. And we're actually looking for it to be uh, more like about a 1,700 or 1,800 point decline 
uh, during that period. That is not a lot. Again, in the in in the world of corrections, uh, that is not a very big correction. You could see the uh, that period right in here. I'm just going to duplicate that and grab it. And right in this period right over here, this was of course a much bigger correction in the 40% category. But again, you can see those alignments in there. And if I go way back over here to that last time that they all lined up together right there, I'm just going to duplicate it. You can see in here this also was a much bigger correction. So we're getting into that period where all of these cycles are in alignment in these corrective periods like there and then like this one and like what's coming right over here. And that is a high probability we're going to get this correction that we expect. So uh, NASDAQ today a little bit weaker uh, than the broad market, but nothing significant. Uh, and that points out to around late August to early September uh, for this corrective process. Uh, and they're slightly larger cycles than we're looking at in the S&P 500. So that's kind of the big look uh, when we look at uh, the stock market here, uh, a one to three month view. Uh, and uh, I would say that uh, the market has very, very little time and only a few points left on the upside. Uh, before we get into that period. Again, it's probabilistic analysis. We could be wrong. You've seen us wrong. But the probabilities uh, that we share with you are normally the ones that are the higher probabilities. And uh, we do expect uh, that uh, you will see overall those bear fruit for you. We want you to be incredibly successful uh, because your success is, is plainly our success. So uh, that's it for the show. I uh, want you to be so careful. It is so crazy out there. And we're always wishing you great trading. Well, I'm going to sit down.